Elliot, what the hell, bro? You said we were gonna take the fucking trash out. Sorry, man, I totally forgot. I've been setting up my new computer. Go play with your fucking toys. The Falcon was a toy, all right? This is the future. Well, the future looks like shit. Oh, Max, come on. Gates is a thief and a fucking liar, dude. He Xeroxed the shit out of this interface. That's a goddamn lie. He didn't get his interface from Xerox. That's a total misconception. If you need to get Matthew Perry and Jennifer Aniston to make a weird video promoting your operating system, then clearly there's a problem. I like that video. Of course you do. Are you done? I need to get back to work on all this shit. Do what you need to do. I'm gonna go back to my more clearly stable, more attractive, and more innovative system. Yeah, go play with your pizza box. By the way, this package came for you earlier. Hello? Hey, it's me. Mia? Keep it down. I'm not supposed to be talking to you. I don't want Max to find out. Look, I can't talk for long. I'm about to get my network set up and I'm not getting the second phone line put in until Wednesday. This won't take much time. Did you get it yet? I still don't know what it is exactly. You've been acting weird all month. You haven't been to any of the meetings. People are starting to think you dipped. Take a chill pill, alright? I'm fine, but look, there's something I need to tell you. You should be getting a package sometime this afternoon. I just got it. Open it. It's an old floppy. Too old. That's the problem. It's an HD floppy disk. As you already know, I'm sure, these came out like 10 years ago. Well, almost. 1987. Whatever. Listen. This floppy is clearly older than that. Damien found it buried in the tunnels near Freedom Cavern. Why are you still seeing Damien? That's none of your business. It's Max's business. Not anymore. And stop changing the subject. Look, there's no way to know for sure how old it is, but something isn't right. No, I feel you. Did you say he found it near Freedom Cavern? Yeah. Why? That's an archaeological excavation site. What was Damien doing there? Well, like I said, he found it in the tunnels, which are about 10 miles north of the site. It hasn't been excavated yet, so his friends invited him to do some digging. They're into that kind of shit. So, wait, they found it underground? From what he told me, yeah. That's so fucking weird. The only reason people go to the tunnels is to find artifacts. Some of them millions of years old. Are you saying this floppy is millions of years old? No, that's not possible, obviously. We both know that. All I'm saying is that whoever put it there clearly didn't want it to be found. I agree with you. But here's the other thing. It's still operable. Hold on. It works? Surprisingly, but there's only one file on the disk. It looks like some kind of batch. I couldn't figure it out, so I thought maybe you could take a look. Alright, I'll look into it. Thank you so much. I really owe you one. Yeah, well, I'll see what I can do. Keep me updated, and be careful. I will. Bye. I'll talk to you later. Okay, whatever. Okay, what is this?
Hold on a second. Uh, all right, what's up? Who are you just talking to? Why does it matter? I heard you talking to a chick. It was Mia, wasn't it? Max. God damn it, dude, what the fuck? She just needed me to do her a favor. I don't give a shit. You're my best friend. I need you to promise me you won't talk to her anymore. I can't do that. We work together. There's no way I'll be able to avoid talking to her. Look, I get it. She dumped you and it sucks. But be a big boy and move on. She isn't worth it. Just promise me. I won't talk to her. But if she talks to me at work, I'm not going to be a dick. If it helps, whenever Damien passes me at work, I'll tell him to go fuck himself. Fine. Do you think she loves him? Max, you have got to stop thinking like that. What was that? I don't know. I'll go check it out. Hello. Today is August 24th, 2001, and this is my first time using a webcam. I'm going to save this video, actually, because I think this could be the future of communication, possibly even the future of entertainment. Hear me out. Imagine watching someone's blog 
instead of reading it. Now this trend has already captivated video nerds such as myself for the past year or so, but I can really see it catching on. I could see this sweeping the nation, possibly even sweeping the world. But maybe I'm wrong. Maybe nobody cares what I have to say, <laughs> or anybody else for that matter. I guess we'll just have to wait and see. Hello? Um, uh, is this Ian Young? I call it about a situation regarding his mother, who I saw at the corner of gold in Marshall last night. I just wanted to know how much she charges. You're such an idiot. Where the hell have you been, by the way? I haven't heard from you. Ugh, I've been busy with stuff, but I was just calling to catch up. Did you sign up for the beta testing of the MP4? Oh, yeah, of course. <laughs> I'm super impressed with the quality so far, but um, how do you think it's going to compare to the MOV? Dude, Apple isn't even rolling out the MOV file until March. But that's not why I called. What's up? Okay, hear me out. It's a, a little weird. Oh, Jesus, Pete. If this is another one of your conspiracy theories, I mean... No, 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 I, I get it, but this is a good one. All right. Lay it on me. Okay, there should be a couple files in your shared folder. One is an MP4, which is why I asked to be signed up for testing. The other is a batch file that was uncovered from a floppy disk in Elliot's computer. Don't watch the video yet, though. I need to give you a little bit of backstory. <laughs> oh, it was aliens, right? Shut the fuck up. <laughs> I got this video from a guy I network with on the forums, right? Well, he networks with Trent Gallagher. Am I supposed to know who that is? Dude, he's only like the most famous tech restoration guy ever. He likes to uncover lost files from old computers. They're usually old IBMs, but you know, he takes what he can get. He's a master at what he does. What exactly does he try to recover? Whatever he can. System recovery has come a long way the past few years, so him and his buddies go to old shops and they see what they can find. They tend to look for computers that had their hard drives wiped or were damaged in some way. <laughs> so let me guess, he found something? <sighs> oh yeah! He found something really strange on a system running Windows 95. The guy at the computer parts store he bought it from said it was sold to them in 1996. He wasn't able to recover everything, but he was able to recover some really interesting shit. So, do you want to hear about it? Do I have a choice? <laughs> of course not, dipshit. So, you remember that uh, software developer who went missing in San Francisco about five or six years ago? Uh, yes, I do. Um, El Elliot. Elliot something. Elliot Martin. You know, they never found the body, but... He didn't really have much family from what I read, so his stuff either got donated or sold. Hold on. <laughs> Let me take a wild fucking guess where this is going. The computer your buddy bought used to belong to Elliot Martin? Yes, exactly! Do you really expect me to believe that some dead guy's computer just magically showed up at the shop one day, and the one guy who bought it also knew how to recover the files? Look, I'm not stupid. I know it's probably a hoax, but you wonder what else he found on the hard drive? An MP fucking four. Oh come on, that's not even possible. Not at all. But if the story is real, then this could be some next level shit. Like some real fucking unexplained phenomena. If it's real, then sure, but do you really expect me to believe that some dude from the 90s had access to a file type that didn't even exist? Do you want to see it or not? Whatever. Okay, cool. I'll stay on the line. What exactly am I looking at? 
Uh, it's video footage of the World Trade Center being hit by... I don't, I don't know, something. The Twin Towers were completely destroyed. Well, that doesn't make any sense. The video is dated September 11, 2001. It's only like a few weeks from now. Okay, this is a waste of my time. Dude, you can't argue with the metadata. The date is literally encoded into the file. That doesn't mean shit, and you know that. There's plenty of programs that allow you to transfer dates. Are there programs out there that allow you to render a video to a file type that doesn't exist yet? We don't even know if that's true. As far as the video is concerned, I mean, it's well produced. I'm not gonna lie, it looks great, but it's obviously highly edited and designed to get people like you to fall down the rabbit hole. It's interesting. Interesting doesn't mean real, Pete. You don't think I know that? I just... I think it's something we should keep an eye on. Maybe I should keep an eye on you. Ian! I know you're skeptical. But if I'm gonna investigate this, I need your support. Why so, do you need my support? Oh, because you're my brother-in-law. I love annoying the shit out of you, but also because you know video more than anyone I know. Fine. If you get access to anything else, let me know. <laughs> oh, that's the spirit. All right, I'll catch you later. See ya. Hey, Eason, can I call you back in a bit? I'm just a little busy being an impatient bastard. <laughs> I just got the new Whistler, or sorry, Windows XP. It's the RTM. It comes out next month. Can't you wait? Sure, but this is the copy going out to manufacturers before it goes on sale. So, I get it for free and a month early. God, anyway, I was just calling to see if you needed anything from Mark. He got some new equipment in. I can't really hear you that well. Uh, where'd you say you were? Mark's on Hudson Street. Hold on. Something's happening over here. Wait, what? Well, what's going on? Oh my god. There's been some kind of explosion. Explosion? What the fuck is going on? I, I don't know. It looks like some kind of bomb went off in the North Tower. Wait, what? What? Is Peter with you? No, he was home when I left. I gotta call you back, okay? Today is September 11th, 2001. It's about nine in the morning and my sister Eason just called me. Apparently, there's been some kind of explosion at the World Trade Center. Which is really weird because just a few weeks ago, my brother-in-law, Peter Levinsky, showed me this video. Hey! Hey, are you seeing this shit? I haven't turned on the news yet, but Easton just called me and filled me in a bit. What the fuck is going on? Where are you? I just turned onto J Street. I'm right around the corner, just stay there. Okay, I'll see you in a second. Ladies and gentlemen, we're breaking from regular programming to bring you some disturbing news from Lower Manhattan. What's happened, Jeff? Well, Christopher, we can't really confirm all the details, but it, it seems that just moments ago, Another airplane appearing to be a large dead miner had struck the South Tower of the World Trade Center. Now that's all we know at this time. But again, this comes shortly after an earlier incident where 
hate to say I told you so, but uh... Really? Now? Right now? People are fucking dying and you're treating it like a joke? No, no, of course not. That's not what I meant. Look, I'm sorry. Alright, has the news said anything else? The plane just hit the South Tower. What? A second plane? That's what it says! A plane just hit the South Tower! What the fuck?! Was there an airplane in the video I sent you? I don't remember. Where did this video really come from? I don't know, they found it on Elliot Martin's hard drive. And how the fuck did he have access to an MP4 six years before they were invented? How the hell am I supposed to know? I've been trying to figure this shit out for months. Have you shown this video to anyone else? No. I mean, I briefly mentioned it to Eason. But that's it. We should go over to my place and we can fill her in on all of this. Listen, Peter. I'm gonna tell you something, but you have to promise not to freak out, okay? What's going on? Eason is only a few blocks away from the towers. What? But where is she? When she called, she said she was at Marks on Hudson Street. What are you doing? Going over there. <laughs> to Manhattan? Look at the fucking news! You're not gonna get anywhere close! You may be fine with letting her stay out there, but I can't allow that. Listen, Peter, I understand. We gotta stay safe. We have to stay here. So what? You really don't care if she's in danger. How could you even say that? She's my sister! And she's my wife! And you're being a fucking pussy. So I'm going with or without you. Oh, fine, I'll come with you. What the fuck? What the fuck? So today we're going to be going over all the major theories that I think will make you question your own existence. So one of you guys sent me this video and I think that it's one of the clearest UFO sightings that we've had on this channel in a while. So I have a really exciting video for you guys today. I'm going to be talking to Skylar Grant of the Doberman Channel. So what if you found yourself trapped in another reality? Today we're going to hear her story. Hey, 
I need your help. Are you free tonight? I wish. I have to finish this paper. I'm failing. Huh. Love that for you. What do you want? Well, I was hoping you could help me out with my blog. What do you want me to do? It's your blog. Well, I don't know what the fuck I'm doing. It's my first website. I mean, there's no more help from the algorithms. And whose fault is that? Girl, you and I both know that these video sharing platforms are moving away from conspiracy content. I get that, but there's a difference between moving away from and flat out shadow banning my shit. I apologize. I should have been more direct. They're censoring you, Riley. All right. Conspiracy theories are out, and if you want to see the same type of growth that you had before, you need to do something different. Have you considered changing the kind of content you make? No! Culture Geist is a conspiracy channel. It always has been. I'm not changing shit. Well then quit your bitching, alright? Either do something productive, like finishing your website, or, I don't know, promote yourself. Yeah, you're right. So are we done here? Because I need to get back to this. Back to what? Failing? Miserably. See, that's why I dropped out of grad school. Are you sure it wasn't because computer sciences are a little too hard for you? Too hard? No. Too boring? Absolutely. Oh, that sounds about right. Anyway, look, I gotta go, okay? I gotta finish this. Okay, good luck. Thanks. Somebody yesterday who looks so much like you, I almost cry. Which is stupid, and I know it, but I couldn't seem to stop that prickling in my eyes. Am I doomed to wander around until I find someone who could make me smile like you could? Until then, I'll just have. Can somebody teach me? Hypocritical for me to say I'm blue But I'm human and it's easy to fall back into habits that lead me straight back to you Another one that some of you may remember if you're in our age group. Wait, you're going to tell me about this? All right. <laughs> no, I just wanted to get your live reaction to see if you actually remember it. Tell me what you got. Do you remember that Elliot Martin guy that went missing back in like the, uh, I think it was like the late 90s? Yeah, that's the guy that went missing on 9-11, right? Yeah, September 11th. 1995. What's interesting is two more people went missing on September 11th, 2001. But what's weird is these guys were miles away from the actual event. Yeah, I don't remember that specific part of the theory. Their names were Ian Young and Peter Levinsky. Uh, they were video editors. That's right. I think I do remember them. But I thought it was like an internet legend. So the story goes like this. There was this video file that apparently showed 
video of the 9-11 attacks. And the interesting part is, is apparently, so the legend goes, it was found on Elliot Martin's recovered hard drive. Yeah, I don't know. The whole thing just sounds kind of far-fetched to me. And that is why it's an urban legend. I mean, let's be real here. This video probably doesn't even exist. And that part of the story may be completely made up. But Elliot, Ian, and Peter were all real people and they all disappeared. And the internet did what the internet does? That's the likely scenario. I mean, there were reports of this video being spread around back in like 2006, and that's all hearsay. That's why it's considered lost media. Hey, sorry to bug you, but I found something really interesting that I think I could use for my blog. All right, what is it? It's this video podcast of these people talking about this really cool conspiracy theory that I'd never actually heard of before. So we're just stealing other people's ideas now? Shut up. No. No, they didn't really investigate it. They just kind of talked about it. And there's not really a whole lot of information out there, but there has to be more to this. Okay, sounds interesting. Uh, how long is the podcast? It's short. It's just a clip. Send it to me. No, just go to the Freak City forums and then search for 9-11 um, lost media content. Fine. It's kind of interesting. Right? Too bad it's bullshit. Ugh. Okay, there it is. Look, I, I believe that there were disappearances. And it is a bit of a coincidence. But this whole future telling 9-11 video thing seems kind of off base. Maybe, but I don't know. If I can find some more information about it, I can make it into a really cool series for my blog. Okay, fine. Look. I'm almost done with this paper, so how about I come over after? Cool. Uh, door's unlocked, as always, so just come in whenever you get here. I'll be here all day. Okay. Sounds good.
Uh, how's it going? Oh, it's good. It's good. I feel like I'm talking to a celebrity. Oh, well, I, I mean, thanks for the ego boost. Um, all right, so here's the thing. I am officially moving away from video content like I talked about in the email, and I'm moving into a blog format. So I'm really trying to kick it off strong by talking about something that has not been discussed a whole lot. And this Elliot Martin thing that you talked about on your podcast, I think it's super interesting. I just, I cannot find shit about it anywhere and online. you're not going to. I mean, that's why I talked about it on my podcast and not my main channel. It's a dead end story. See, I disagree. I mean, I think there's a lot of really interesting stuff here. It's just, I can't find anything about it online. And if we're being honest, that just makes me want to dig even deeper into this shit. Oh, I feel you, trust me. But like Julian said in the podcast, the internet took these coincidental disappearances and went wild, creating these internet legends. So, what you're telling me is that you basically think the 9-11 video's faked. The video doesn't exist. I'm like 95% sure it's all horseshit. Don't get me wrong. I totally support you making this series, and I think it could be really interesting. But honestly, you should take more of an investigative point of view rather than taking this whole thing at face value. So do you have any advice? Start with the facts. That's the only thing that's verifiable. Don't focus too much on trying to find this alleged video footage. Narrow your focus to the disappearances. These are the events that actually happen and can actually be researched properly. The best advice I have for you is to research who their friends and family might be. I didn't dig too deep for this podcast, but I was able to find Eason Levinsky, Peter's wife. And how did that go? She didn't give me much information, but I also didn't pry too hard. Maybe reaching out to her could be a great place for you to start. This wasn't a passion project for me. I just wanted to get a general idea of the situation for the podcast. If you want to dig deeper, go for it. Well, I really appreciate that. Can you send me her contact information? I'll email it to you as soon as we get off. Thank you so much. You know, I, I really enjoyed talking to you. Likewise. And if you need anything else, please reach out. I'd love to collaborate with you sometime. Oh, me too, absolutely. Great, take care, all right? Thanks, you too. Bye. Bye. Go! <gasps> oh, Jesus, <laughs> Jeremy, learn how to fucking knock. <laughs> What's wrong? You said I could come in whenever I wanted. Oh. Okay, whatever. All right, so get this. I just got off the phone with Allison Neubauer. No shit, really? Yeah, she's gonna send me the contact information for uh, Peter Levinsky's wife, Eason. Cool, sweet. Yeah. Why do you have the camera up? Oh, um, I need to get some B-roll for the next video. You know, Elliot Martin needs some content. All right, well, you sure this is the road you wanna go down? Well, yeah, I mean, I'm already this far down it. I might as well. Fine, but move over. <clears throat> Hi, Cultus community. I'm Jeremy. I'm the cool one. <laughs> All right, what'd she say? Well, basically, she told me that my research needs to be about the disappearances and the facts surrounding them. No speculation. So that's what I'm going to do. I mean, I'm going to reach out to people who are close to them and maybe find out who might have been involved. Shit, I agree with her. That, that's exactly what you need. You need to base this all on facts, not fiction. Besides, I'm not really too keen on believing this whole 9-11 conspiracy video thing. See, I know that you don't, but I, I just can't ignore it. And I agree on the way that my research should be done, like whatever, but it's a huge fun part of the mystery. I just can't not cover any of it. All right, look, I, I'm with you. As long as you have your priorities straight, I got your back. All right, so show me what you got. Okay.
Well, we have some contact information. So let's get this shit show started. Is this Eason? That would be my mom. Is there something I can help you with? Um, I hope so. Um, I, I got this information from Allison Neubauer. I'm, I'm doing a video series on the Elliot Martin case, and I was hoping she could maybe give me some information on what happened in 2001. <sighs> Jesus, you guys never stop, do you? I'm sorry? The only reason she talked to that Allison person was because she promised she was only going to make one podcast, and that's it. We're not interested in being a part of any video series. Hi, I am so sorry for my colleague here. She sounds like she's going to be exploitive of you and your family and your story, but I guarantee you she will show you the utmost respect if you're willing to cooperate with us. I don't care. Have a great day and don't call here again. She seems pleasant. Oh, shut up. Whatever, okay. That's fine. We'll just move on to something else. Right, right. Um, and that would be what? I guess we just start from the beginning. Hey, check this out. It's an old business profile from 1994. That's kind of cool. Uh, scroll down, there might be some people that worked with them. Wait, what's that? There's a link. Running a business is tough. There's just so much to keep track of. And don't get me started on the software. It's like every software I use is from a different planet. But then I discovered ZetaFlex Solutions. They're a software company that designs software for small businesses and corporations. With software by ZetaFlex, I can manage my inventory, sales, and even quality control quickly and easily. And the best part is, it's all integrated. Every program by ZetaFlex Solutions is interconnected by their servers. You might be asking yourself, how does this work? Well, get this. Client server computing software is like having your own personal assistant that can do everything from managing your finances to making your coffee. Okay, not really, but you get the idea. Here's how it works. You've got one computer, that's a server, and all the other computers in your office are its loyal subjects. The server computer stores all your data and applications, and the little guys can access them from anywhere in the office. It's like magic and don't worry about security. ZetaFlex Solutions has got your back like a trusty sidekick. You can set up access levels for different users so only the people you trust can access your super secret data. So long, sneaky spies. My business runs like a well-oiled machine now that I've made the switch. No more headaches, no more confusion, just straightforward software that makes my life easier. Welcome to the future. Dataflex Solutions. Computing. Done right. Hey, wait! There's Elliot. Oh, shit! Hey, is the website still? Let's find out. Um... Okay, it's defunct. Well, no surprise there, but... Look, there's still something here about who worked at the company. Perfect. We have like three people we can choose from. All right, let's pick one at a time. That one, Max uh, Fulton. Okay. Oh, fuck. They live together. Great job, journalist extraordinaire. How the fuck did you miss that? Well, I'm sorry. It said Maximilian. I'm sorry I didn't put two and two together on that one. Not Sherlock fucking Holmes, all right. Just, they focused on Elliot a lot. Max just went under the radar. Do you think Elliot killed Max? <gasps> oh, Jesus. It's Max calling from beyond the grave. Shut up, shut up, shut up. Okay. 
Hello? Hi, my name is Eason Levinsky. You tried calling earlier? Oh my god! Hi. I'm sorry about my daughter Christine. She feels very strongly about our family history and doesn't want my story to be made into some kind of media circus. Oh, no, I completely understand. Uh, my name is Riley James. I'm an independent content creator, and I don't work for anybody. I can assure you that your role in this is going to be very minor, just information. I'm, I'm really just looking to do an exposition on Elliot Martin and expose him. That would be a mistake. Um, what do you mean? As far as I'm concerned, Elliot is the first victim in all of this. Uh, right, but, um, you don't find it odd that his roommate went missing at the exact same time as him? He had to have been looking up something dirty, something dark, because there's no way those files just appeared on his hard drive. We don't know that. Before Pete went missing, he told me about the guy who ended up with Elliot's computer, Trent Gallagher. He was known for restoring files from old hard drives. He found something else on there when he restored it, but I was never able to find out what it was. Do you have his contact information? Can we talk to him? He's dead. Shit. They're all dead. Trent, Elliot, Max, Ian, Pete. Yeah, sure, you can say they're missing all you want, but the only reason they call these cases disappearances is because the bodies were never found. The murders are clearly connected, but I don't think it was Elliot. Someone was hunting them down. All of them. I see what you're saying, but if they were murders, where are the bodies? It there's no evidence left behind in any of the cases, and that's that's what we're stuck on. It was the same thing with Trent. It's as if someone had cleaned up the mess. Wait, that's a lot for one person to do, right? So, it's gotta be a group. I don't know. I wouldn't even know where to start with that. There's literally no information online. The media just called them disappearances. I get that. It's frustrating. Before Trent was killed, I was in communication with him back in 2005. I wanted to figure out who was doing this, but after he died the same year, I hit a wall. However, he did send me a video shortly before his death that explained some things. I can send it to you. That would that would be great. Please do. I will text you my email. Um There, did you get it? Yeah, I'll send it over now. Perfect. Thank you so much. Riley, please do whatever you have to do in order to find out who did this. I want nothing more than to have justice for Ian and Pete. Uh, <clears throat> sorry, uh, excuse me. How do you know Ian? He was my brother. Fuck. I'm... I'm so sorry. I will do everything that I can. Thank you. Let me know if you need anything else. I will. Thank you so much. <laughs> Bye. Bye. So Pete and Ian were brothers-in-law. I guess? I just... I don't know, this is so weird. I mean... The case from 1995 and 2001 are like, identical. Right, okay, so we, you're right. We, we have two victims from each case, and if you don't include Trent, because uh, in 2005 he died alone, but... That's it, that's everyone that's got mentioned, right? Well, I don't know, let's just take a look at what she said. How's it going, Eason? Always a pleasure to help. So here's what I know about that particular hard drive, at least from what I can remember. The computer was bought to me back in 1996, less than a year after Elliot's disappearance. It was sold to us by his co-worker, Mia Ritter. She came in hoping to recover whatever files had been deleted from his drive. I was really backed up, and it really wasn't a priority for me at the time, so I didn't get around to it till about a year later but I was able to recover a video file. It was the most recently deleted file, so it was the easiest one to find. Now what's weird though, is that there was a floppy that was still inside the desktop that was empty, but I was lucky enough to recover that as well. It was some kind of a batch file. I can't remember what the name of it was, but those were the two files I was able to recover. I opened the batch file and it asked me if I wanted to send or receive files. I chose to receive them, but then it started transferring a video to the desktop. I remember thinking it had to be some kind of a virus, so I deleted it. Now, in, in, in 1998, Mia picked up the computer from my store and I was the one that gave it to her. I'm assuming she gave it to Peter when he got it in 2001. 
Not long after that, two men walked into my store asking for the computer. Obviously, I didn't have it anymore, but I knew it had to be important because I've seen both of these men hanging out around the store lately, and it's weird, like, like I feel like they're watching me. There's clearly something about this file that these guys want, but I don't know, I don't know what I'm supposed to do about it. Anyway, look, that's all I know. I hope this helps. Reach back out to me if you need anything else. Oh, shit, I know which coworker we're gonna reach out to next. Right? <laughs> this is big. If Mia really did give the computer to Peter, that means these two cases are definitely linked somehow. I'd hate to say it, but I think that you finally have proof that these cases are connected. Exactly. Well, now I just have to figure out how to get in touch with Mia. Oh, shit. Look, um, you figure that out. I gotta go home and make dinner. Ooh, yeah. You better go do that. It's it's definitely too late for me to start calling random strangers. I should call them at night. Yeah. Uh, hey, I'll text you tomorrow. Yeah, I'll be here. Okay. Oh, and good job today. Oh, thanks. See you tomorrow. Bye. Jesus Christ, I swear to God, if I find out you put us at risk again, I'll kill you myself. We're always gonna be at risk. Look, it's a deadly game we're playing here. The best thing we could do was get in and out as fast as possible, every time. You're being messy. If you don't stop leaving breadcrumbs, they're gonna know what we're doing. And they have my name, Jonah. <sighs> I promise to be more careful, all right? Oh, thank you, fuck. Okay. We have to go back in and clean up the mess. All right, I'm in. Yeah, I just got past the firewall. I'm still trying to crack the encryption on this file. It's like they're using a completely new algorithm. They change it pretty often, most likely to keep people out. Are you sure they haven't purged it yet? I mean, everything we found so far has been useless. If it was useless, they wouldn't be guarding it with this level of encryption. There was a guy in Houston who claimed he had QSTC and now he's missing. They're doing something with it. What is it exactly? Who the fuck knows? Now let's hurry up and fix this before they know we're here. It's taking longer than I thought. The code is more complex than I anticipated, but I'm making progress. What about the back door? Make sure you secure it. Don't worry. Okay, I think I found the problem. It looks like you left a few lines of rogue code that are disrupting the system. Yeah, I see that too. Working on it. Just need to make sure there aren't any trace backs. Shit, shit, fuck. They've detected an intruder. We have to move fast. Just a few more lines of code. I swear to God, Jonah. You're done. I fucking hate you. No trace backs, right? We're good. But we may want to wait a few weeks before trying again. If they keep changing their algorithm, gonna want to take advantage of that. I agree. Oh, I gotta go. Ethan's calling. All right. Good work today. Thanks. I'll talk to you later. <laughs> Deuces. Hey, how are you? It's been forever. I need to talk to you about something. Okay. What's up? Some content creators trying to do a series on the Elliot Martin case. How do you know that? I talked to her a few weeks back. Ethan, what the fuck? You told me after the Dark Lamb podcast that you were going to stay out of the media. You said this was a few weeks back. Why are you telling me this now? I've been going back and forth about whether or not I should tell you, but I really think she can help. Her intentions seem genuine and I haven't been making any progress here. Jonah and I have been hacking into their systems and gathering information for months. We're so close. I can't run the risk of the story getting out too early. The internet trolls don't know shit about Dean Core, and I don't know about you, but I plan on keeping it that way until time is right. I understand, but she has a lot of followers. If you're able to expose Eden Core, then you can utilize her following to spread the word. I'd rather it be her than someone else. She can make this message go viral better than anyone. Okay, I see your point. But is the reward greater than the risk? I think it is. Plus, she's very smart. She knows a lot already, and it's been through her own research. It's only a matter of time before she starts to look into Edencore herself. She needs to hear it from you. Fine. I'll reach out to her. 
Her name is Riley James. She's the creator of the Culture Guys series. I'll text you her number. Now's not the time to be vague. You need to tell her everything. Sounds good. I'll do it now. Don't be a stranger, okay? I don't want to get my family wrapped into this, so I'll be keeping my distance. Just let me know if anything important happens. Will do. It was nice hearing from you again. Take care of yourself, all right? I will. Is this Riley James? Yeah, who's this? This is Mia Reader. Oh shit! Jeremy, come over here, it's Mia! Seriously? We need to talk. We've literally been trying to figure out a way to contact you for weeks. How did you get my number? Don't worry about it. This story you're trying to cover, it's not at all what you think it is. So, I need you to just listen to everything I'm about to tell you. Yeah, of course. Do you know about the floppy disk? All I know is that Trent Gallagher recovered a batch file and that he used it before he died, but he didn't remember where it was. He also said something about two men who started stalking him after he took the computer back. Are you near your computer? Yeah, I'm on it right now. If I screencast, can you accept it? Totally. Okay, take a look at this while I talk. The floppy was discovered by Damien Clyde, an old boyfriend of mine that worked with Max Elliott and me. He found it about 10 miles north of the excavation site near San Francisco. I took it from him, mailed it to Elliott so that he could help me figure out what it was. There was a batch file on there that was hard to gain access to. At first I thought it was encrypted, but the floppy was really beat up, almost unreadable. However, I got it to work eventually. I didn't feel comfortable using the batch file. For all I knew, it could have been some kind of malware. I knew Elliot was experienced in this department. So what exactly is this batch file? It's called the Eden Core QSTC system. This is where things get really weird. The company we worked for, Zetaflex Solutions, started having financial problems in 2003 and was acquired by Eden Core in 2005. What's odd is that Incor wasn't even a company until 2002. Why is that odd? Elliot used a batch file in 1995, seven years before Incor even existed. Hmm, that sounds sketchy. Well, Incor has always been a pretty sketchy tech company. No one knows what they do, but somehow they get a shit ton of funding. A friend of mine has been working with me to gain access to more information but most of their projects seem to revolve around client server computing, and it's not really a, anything that raises red flags. There's literally no traces of this QSTC system anywhere. What does QSTC stand for? I have no idea. There's literally no information about it anywhere online. Not even on in-core systems. How convenient. Shut up, Jeremy. This is not some cute little conspiracy that's going to run its course. This is real life and it's not going anywhere until we figure out who's really behind this. Like I said, I can't find anything online, but I do have an inside scoop. Damien works for Edencore, and he helps when he can. I was able to get a hold of this deleted interview with Edencore CEO Maddox Dogan. It's really strange. Take a look. All right, so today we are on with Maddox Dogan, the CEO, or should I say the new CEO of Eden Corp, preceded by his father, Matthew Dogan. Um, this is really exciting. Uh, I've been trying to get you on for a while, so I'm glad to finally be able to talk to you. Um, all right, Maddox, can you tell us a little bit about what Eden Corp does? Certainly. Edencore is a company that specializes in innovative technology solutions. And that's great. But, um, I think our viewers may want something a little bit more specific. Can you, be, can you give us some more specifics on that? I wish I could, but unfortunately, I 
can't go into too much detail. I mean, why not? I mean, I'm sorry if I'm being a little forward, but I'm pretty sure the public would love to know what Eden Core actually does. We hear a lot about it in the news, um, but nobody really knows what they do. So is there something that you're working on that you don't want us to know about? <laughs> no, no, it's just that we're always working on new projects that we can't disclose until they're ready for release. All right, fair. Um, so let's talk about your father, uh, Matthew Dogan. He was the founder of Eden Core, correct? Yes. So how would you say that your father was as a leader compared to yourself? I'd rather not discuss my family in this interview. I, I understand, I, I do, but I mean, Matthew Dogan was an integral part of how modern computing has been shaped since the 90s. I would love to know personally how he's shaped things. I'm sorry, but I prefer to keep my personal and professional life separate. My father no longer runs this company. I do. All right, well, let's, let's move on. Um, are there any projects that Eden Core is working on right now that you could shed some light on? I'd, I'd love to know. You know I can't divulge that information. So, what does any of this have to do with the video that was found on Elliot's computer? Have you seen it? The 9-11 video? Yeah, in the early 2000s, it made its rounds in the underground internet circles, specifically message boards and forums. This interview is relevant because all this shit connects to Eden Core. It's the one thing tying all of these events together. But the 9-11 video specifically seems to be what everyone is the most curious about. I got to save the video before it was completely eradicated online. So it really does exist. Come on, Riley, you can't seriously believe this. There is no such thing as a video that shows the future. Oh, yes, there is, and it's not the only one. What do you mean? Eason and I connected a few years after everything happened. We were working together on this from 2008 until, until about a year or two ago. Earlier on in our conversation, she told me she recovered another video that was found in Ian's recycle bin. Look. It's video footage of Hurricane Katrina. It was accessed the same day as the storm, but four years earlier. When she looked at the date, it said August 24th, 2001, but the video itself was dated August 24th, 2005. Fuck. Exactly. So this batch files is generating videos of the future events and is putting them on people's computers? If the person uses the QSTC system and they choose to receive files, Yes, that's exactly what's happening. I know it's a hard pill to swallow, but every video that's generated, it's like the dates match up every time, as if the QSTC system is pulling data from whatever important future event takes place on the same day it's accessed. Like for the 9-11 video, Elliot accessed the prompt on September 11th, 1995. Obviously, the most important event that happened on that month and day took place six years later, to the day. Same thing with Katrina video, August 24th. It's like a direct line between the same date, just a different year. How is that even possible? That's what we're trying to figure out. Eden Core is hiding something, and they have been for a very long time. Obviously, before they were even a company. Send me the batch file. Are you insane? You do realize everyone who's ever accessed this system has gone missing, right? 
The only reason I haven't is because I never actually used it and I'm not going to. I'm not going to either. I just want to maybe dissect it. Use other programs to break this thing down to code. You don't think I haven't done that? It starts as a simple call and response prompt. Except for all that at the bottom. I know a little something about code myself. What is that? That is not some simple prompt. <laughs> you know code? Good job. You're right, by the way. I've never seen anything like this. And I've been coding since 1993. Issa knows video, and she's been analyzing that for years as well. So let me help. I might be able to bring in a fresh perspective. Before Culture Guys took off, I was actually a computer science major, and I'm up to date on a lot of these new programming languages. I mean, clearly not this one, but the more help you get, the faster we're going to get answers. I second that. I'm still not completely sold of all this, and if there is any way to prove that there's another explanation for this, I'm all for it. I appreciate that. Eason was right about you guys. I can tell you generally mean well. All right. I'll let you help out, but I'm not going to email it to you. That's too risky. I can send you an encrypted link from the cloud. It's a lot more secure. I'll disable the encryption for three minutes. Make sure you encrypt it on your computer when you get it. Got it. If you find anything, call me. I'll send you Jonah's information as well. He's been helping us for a while and he's mostly good at what he does. Will do. Thanks. idea how this thing is operating on modern computers much less like Windows fucking 95 it's it's not anything that would be DOS compatible I just I don't know I'm stuck because it's nothing it's just a bunch of gibberish it's not even really code dude she's totally gaslighting you she sends you this bad file that you aren't allowed to use why do you think that is because it doesn't do anything you know I actually think you might be right None of this shit adds up. Yeah, you're being played. Well, are you still coming over later? For sure. I'm just getting groceries. I'll head over later. Okay, cool. I'll see you.
has the potential to revolutionize multiple industries. I like the sound of that. <laughs> so, so let's talk about the ZetaFlex acquisition that Eden Core made in 2005. Can you tell us a little bit more about that? Of course. Zetaflex was a company that was very active in the mid-90s that specialized in software development for multiple businesses and corporations. When my father, however, made the choice to acquire them, we only carried over one employee. And how has Damien Clyde contributed to Eden Core success? Damien is an incredibly talented programmer. He has been extremely influential when it comes to developing programs that benefit society, such as our energy conservation software and our medical diagnostic tools. Well, that's great to hear. Thanks so much for sharing that with us. Of course. I'm glad we were able to have a more productive conversation this time. I've been working so hard on my documentary about cyber terrorism groups, um, particularly modern ones like DOA, the Leviathan Group, and uh, HALT. Um, I will admit to all of you that I was approached by a representative from Eden Corps, you know, to redo the interview. Um, it was my fault. I asked very inappropriate questions, and um, and Maddox. Um, Maddox is a great CEO and a stand-up guy. Um, so I just wanted to release that statement and um, I look forward to you guys seeing all of the updates regarding my next documentary. I hope you guys have a good day. I'll see you next time. Hello, Riley. Relax. I'm just here to talk. How the fuck did you get on my screen? Let's just say I know computers. Don't be scared, alright? Like I said, I'm just here to talk. Who are you? My name is Damien Clyde. How do you know my name? I got it from one of your sources. What do you want? Someone on your computer just opened a batch file. I need to know who it was. Was it you? Who gave it to you? Look, if you don't want to tell me, that's fine. But I think you should at least know the truth. Okay. Talk. The batch file is a hoax. Now that shouldn't come as a surprise. Eden Core is a tech company, that's true. But they have nothing to do with this. Elliot's roommate, Max, and I we're the ones who built it. We all worked together at the same company. We had a lot of free time and thought it would be funny to build a program using the name of our competition. 
It was meant to be a prank, and it would generate some random files and videos. Videos that contained footage that all ended up coming true? Have you ever heard of pareidolia? No, it's a phenomenon where the brain perceives patterns or meaning where none actually exists. This can occur with visual stimuli such as seeing shapes and clouds or with auditory stimuli such as hearing words or messages. In this case you see a vague glitchy video with ambiguous imagery and you draw the conclusion that it's some kind of premonition. I see. Now as far as the disappearances go, it's very sad. Edencore was a major competitor for us at the time. Someone from their team took this prank program way too seriously. I assume this was the person who killed Elliot and all the others. And if the company is hiding anything, it's the identity of this person in particular. Uh, okay. So I have a question. Of course. Okay, well first I actually have a few statements. Your explanation has a few major flaws. Um, you said you built the first program with Max. Uh, that doesn't make sense. Max wanted nothing to do with you. You literally only worked with him for like, what, like a fucking week before you stole his girlfriend? Also, Eden Core wasn't your competition. Uh, they didn't even exist until 2002, and actually I'm pretty sure that they acquired Zetaflex Solutions a few years later, right? 2005, wasn't it? Also, nice touch with the pareidolia thing. That's impressive, so I guess my question for you is, um, how fucking stupid do you think that I am? Wow. You know a lot more about this shit than I thought you did. It's you, isn't it? You're the one responsible for all of this. We'll be in touch. but we've been really busy here. Any updates? Well, I just got done talking to Damien. Damien? Why? What for? When was the last time you guys spoke? Well, we broke up in 1998. I contacted him about 10 years ago to get his advice on Encore. I haven't talked to him since. He was the only one that stayed with them after the acquisition. Um, I'm surprised you were able to get a hold of him. He's not easy to pin down. He contacted me. What do you mean? How did he get your information? I don't know. It's like he hacked in my computer. He just appeared on a video stream out of nowhere. What the hell? What did he say? He said he knew that I used a QSTC system and- Wait, you used it? Are you insane? I needed to see it for myself. It, it was a choice I made in the moment, but I'm- Starting to regret it now. Riley, this isn't good. You know what this means. I know. And the video? It looked like it was some kind of, like, pandemic. I don't know. I'm, I'm sending it to you now so you can add it to the folder. All right. So what else did he say? Well, he gave me some weird story about how he created the whole thing, and that it was a hoax, and that he made it up with Max, and that Eden Core was a cre competitor with Zetaflex in the 90s. What? Yeah, and when I called him out on it, he just left. Jesus, what the hell? Damien's the guy. That doesn't make sense. When we last talked, he was giving me all kinds of inside information on Encore. He even helped me gain access to the systems that Jonah and I have been hacking into. Maybe to deflect the blame from himself? Still doesn't add up. Damien is the one that found the floppy in the first place. I just don't know if I can believe he's the guy. There's no way to know for sure. Maybe there is. I'm going to add Jonah to the call. I have you on with Riley and me right now. What's going on? Riley, you said that Damien contacted you right after you used the QSTC? Yes. Riley thinks Damien might be the guy, but there's only one way to know for sure. So what do you need? If Damien is truly the one that's responsible, he would have had to track everyone down that used the program. How would he be able to do that? Think about it. Client server architecture. Exactly. So you're saying that the QSTC system is a client-based program that connects to a server? 
How? It's a it's a fucking batch file. It's ancient. I understand where both of you are coming from, but if someone's tracking down everyone that's using the program, this is the most likely scenario. Okay, so let's say that for all intents and purposes that everyone who's ever used a QSDC system is connected to Damien's computer. Is it possible for us to ping the source and confirm this? Oh, I could do more than that. Look, I could ping it, use a trace route, or even try something else like reverse DNS lookup. On a batch file. This is no ordinary batch file, clearly. <laughs> Riley, did you say that he connected his webcam to your computer remotely? Yeah. All right, well, I may have a few more tricks on my sleeve then. It's gonna take a few minutes once I start, and I'll have to use a QSTC in order to do it. Jonah, no, that's out of the question. What about me? I just used it. No bueno. It'll have to be done at the same time that I'm accessing it. Then let me do it. If it is Damien, we have a history. I'm most likely to be a victim. Are you sure about that? No, not even a little bit. But I'm not letting Jonah take the fall here. You don't have to do this. Let me know when you're ready. All right, look, in order to do it this way, I'm gonna have to connect your computer first. Do what you need to do. Can you see what I see? Yeah, I'm about to move your mouse. Can you see that? Yes. Then we're good. Okay, so if you open the QSTC and receive the files, I'll be able to tell if it's connecting to something or someone. See anything? <sighs> it's more like a malware than a client server program. Everyone who has ever received files with it is directly connected to this particular server. So it's almost like a combination of both. I've never seen anything like this before. So it's malicious? It's being used that way. It's like someone knows this particular code, so they changed it at some point and moved it to their server completely. Oh, hold up. I got something. I found an exploit in what I can only assume is the source. Can you find out who the source belongs to? Oh yeah, but I could take it even one step further. This program works kind of like a malware, so this person probably doesn't even know there's a ton of vulnerabilities here. If it is Damien, and he accessed your webcam with some type of software on his computer, that's another vulnerability we could use to our advantage. So, <laughs> say hello to my little friend, the rat. Rat? Remote access Trojan. <laughs> yeah, I'm just gonna drop that bad boy right in there. Mia. Invite Riley to your screen share, so she could be a part of this. I already know where this is going. I told you he's mostly good at what he does. <laughs> you in? Yeah, I'm in. Time to get on, mystery man. Holy shit. I can't believe this worked. Don't move the mouse or anything yet. We, we, we don't know if he's home. Yeah, give it a couple seconds. Ah, fuck it. If we die, <laughs> it was nice knowing you. Well, looky there. I don't get it. Fucking He's knew the it. one person in this entire situation that I thought had the least involvement. Take a look at that. Even Core ditches their client server model in favor of quantum computing? That's in 2018, but in 2020 they developed the QSTC system. That's a year from now. How does how does he know that? Quantum space-time computing. QSTC. What the fuck are you up to, Damien? 2023, the incident. That doesn't sound good. Mia, do you know a mad dog? Mm, not to my knowledge. 
whoever it is, it has to be the guy Damien was with when he tried to buy Elliot's computer from Trent. That's right, so he's not doing this alone. Good afternoon, everybody. Just a reminder, only those with Temporal Integrity Operative or TIO clearance marked by the code EDNQSTC721X are authorized to access and disseminate the information in this video. Ensure that your credentials are up to date and protect this knowledge with the utmost discretion. Let's get started. Time. It's something we've always tried to understand, but do we truly grasp its complexities? There are two dynamics to consider here linear and non-linear time. Linear time is like dominoes. It has a straight path. Its sequence of events follow one after the other, unchangeable and predetermined. When you travel in linear time, you're merely observing the dominoes fall one by one. You can't change the order, nor can you prevent a domino from falling once it's been pushed. When we talk about non-linear time, think of it like a tree. Each branch represents a different path, a different choice, a different outcome. Nonlinear time travel would allow us to navigate these branches, to move from one to another, altering events and choices. But it would also have the potential to cause some sort of butterfly effect, where one small change in history can result in vast differences in another. This is why it's tantalizing to those who dream of rewriting history but it's also incredibly dangerous. So what does all of this have to do with Eden Core? The Eden Core QSTC system. It's an extremely innovative program that allows us to transfer data across time, but it operates solely on linear time. Now let's be clear, all right? The QSTC system is not a time machine, at least not in the way that you might imagine it to be. It's not about physically traveling through time, but rather using the marvels of quantum computing to send data across temporal dimensions. Think of it as laying the foundational bricks for what could theoretically in the distant future become the blueprint to time travel. But for now, it's all about the data and the endless possibilities that it presents. The fabric of time is surprisingly frail and the QSTC system respects that fragility. This is why it is designed to work linearly. It's a safeguard against potential time catastrophes. I can't express the importance of this enough. So, sending files, whether to the past or future, demands utmost caution. It's a task that should only be undertaken in controlled settings. There's another threat we must be aware of. The Leviathan Group. Extremists who dream of tampering with time for their own gain. Now, there are rumors that some of their members may be in our midst, hidden here within our company. Their goal is obviously to exploit nonlinear time and rewrite history. That is why we must be strong and guard our knowledge. And most importantly, we have to tread lightly. What we have created here can change everything. Holy fuck! What? Damien, as per our conversation, I've prepared a detailed timeline of Eden Core's history, specifically focusing on your tenure and the events leading up to the incident. This document will help you keep your story straight when communicating with your subordinates, or as I call them, your priors. Remember, consistency is key. Everything up until 2019, you should already know. You lived it. However, some of the key moments in the document you really need to understand start in 2020, next year. 2020 is when we developed the QSTC system. In 2023, the incident happens, a security breach that you cause when you access its source code. In 2024, I develop a kill switch to purge the QSTC program, erasing it from our servers entirely. However, with you gaining access to its source code, you reroute it to your personal computer servers and hide the QSTC program on a floppy disk before we kill the program. The most important thing for you to remember is that you need to let your priors take it from here. 
Remember, Damien, you hold the key to the future of this technology. Now that it's out of my company's hands, we are in control. No boards, no father's legacy to uphold. It's up to us now to figure out how far we can take this thing. Keep your story consistent and make sure your priors follow suit. If you need any further assistance or have any questions, don't hesitate to reach out. Stay vigilant. Are these some kind of instructions? Riley's on the list. What the fuck? We have to get you somewhere safe and fast. You're the only person Damien's targeted that knows he's coming. We could get you out of this alive. How? We'll think of something. I have to take a picture of this. Mm. Hold up. Jonah? What the hell is this? Damien lives in tow? You mean he's lived 30 minutes away from my house this whole fucking time? Damien still lives in San Francisco. It's where Eden Core is based, but clearly he knew you were going to access QSTC somehow. Jonah, log off and wipe any trace of us being here. Riley, you have to get out of there now! Hello? Is this Damien Clyde? It is. May I ask who's speaking? It's me. Well, that's what I thought. What year are you talking to me from this time? 2024. Well, it's nice to know I'm alive and well in my 50s. You contacted me from 2005, like six months ago. Said to expect a call from you around this time? I remember that conversation. You probably remember it more clearly, though. It's been six months for you, but 18 years for me. So, refresh my memory. You told me you'd reach out again to give very specific details, so I guess I've been expecting you. Good. So we're on the same page. I'm dropping a file on your PC. I need you to put it on a floppy disk and bury it. I'll send you the coordinates. Am I allowed to know why? The less you know, the better. But you know what's at stake if you don't. Just tell me where I need to go. Hey! Jeremy, if you're on your way here, you need to turn back now! What the hell are you talking about? Riley, right, what the fuck's happening? I I'm gonna send someone. I, 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 I need to send someone. What? I, I need to send a message. To who? What, what are you doing? I'm gonna make it to where Damien never killed anybody.
Elliot Martin. You don't know me, but something really bad is about to happen. Someone is in the house. Jesus, it's been three years since we last spoke. Are we not done? Not until you tell me where it is. We started doing all this digging over there. It's become a huge excavation site. You know, Freedom Caverns? They found all these fucking artifacts and they've been plowing through the surrounding areas. It's only a matter of time before they start digging up the north side. I had to get it out of there. Does anyone know you have it? No. Don't lie to me. I mean... My girlfriend knows, but only because she saw it on me. And I gave her some bullshit story about it being some old, mysterious thing that I found. She totally bought it. Where is it? It's right on my desk. Are you sure? Check. God damn it! It was here this morning! No matter what I do, it always ends the same way. What do you mean? Your girlfriend just mailed it off to Elliot. Elliot Martin? guy from Zetaflex? Yeah, that's the one, and in about a week from now he's gonna have that file on his computer. What the fuck am I supposed to do now? What we always do. Take care of business. I'm Mad Dog. He's a good friend of mine in 2024, and he has connections to people you haven't met yet. He specializes in disposal. Disposal of what exactly? The evidence that's going to be left when we take care of business. <laughs> That's not happening. Elliot is my co-worker. People are going to know if he goes missing. Mad Dog leaves no traces. He's been reaching out to other connections of mine, and he sent someone to meet you in 1995. I don't think I can do it. I'm not a murderer. I can't. Might I remind you of what's at stake if you don't? Promise me I don't get caught. Have I gotten caught? No. Trust me. You'll be fine. The story always starts and ends the same way. Now I'm the one 